Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is going to be the update to the Vampire, the PvP Sorcerer build for the Greymoor chapter. Now this build has been around for quite a while, believe it or not. Before the Vampire changes were in, this was a Vampire specific build, trying to utilize their skills as much as possible. But now that they've changed quite a considerable amount, this build needed a bit of an overhaul. So here we go, basically. Now, I'm going to go into the stats first of all, and he's getting a duel for this one so we can actually see the PvP stats, because on PTS there's only non-CP stuff. So, we're going to go into the stuff there, show all of our stats and shininess. So, we're sitting on 32.2k max magicka, 22.7k max health, almost 1400 mag recovery, and nearly 10k max stamina. We don't have any health recovery because we're stage 4 vampire. We do have 2.5k spell damage, but that's going to go up to about 3 or 4 a little bit more than that, in fact, especially if we're going inside and outside of invisibility. 32% crit and 15 and 13%, uh, sorry, K on resistances. We'll put that back on again. Now, we do have 64 points into Max Magicka, of course, because we've got a decent amount of health anyway, but you can alter that if you want to. We are using the Clockwork Citrus Filet stuff, but if you want to use the flat stuff, you can. Just bear in mind, you'll have to use more recovery in terms of your heavy attack, so you will have to utilize that a bit more. So if we put this food on instead, which you can use, although again, I would personally favor the recovery food. Recovery does go down quite a bit. Potion needs to be on. Um, but, of course, your max health and max magic does go up a substantial amount. So the choice is entirely up to you. It depends. If you can keep up your heavies and keep up your sustain, you're good. You can go with the flat stuff. If not, you want to drop a little bit of health and magic and you can go for the recovery food. Now, we're using the Love and Munderstone to make sure we get as much pen as possible. And we are a stage 4 vampire on purpose. We have 0 health recovery. We take 20% extra damage from flame. We have 12% increase cost to our basic abilities. Anything that's not vampire. But we do have 24% reduction to all vampire abilities. That includes our ultimates, by the way. So that's very, very important. Bear in mind these bonuses when we get to the passives. And, of course, when we get to the gear. Because they are very, very important. Now, first of all, I'm going to go into the skills. Everything is going to be explained in detail. I'm going to go over where they come from, what morphs to take and why. And then I'm going to go over the gear afterwards and start lining this all up. This does actually work hand in hand with the overall setup. It's not just slap the gear on and you're done. There is a very specific reason everything has been done in this way. Now, if you choose to skip this, of course, that's entirely up to you. But if you ask comments in the section below that have already been answered, I, of course, won't be repeating myself. So it's at your own risk. Now... First of all, we are using Elusive Mist. Now, this is in the Vampire skill line. Surprise, surprise. This did get changed a little bit. Um, this no longer um, costs an active ability uh, cost to start with. This is a channel instead. Now, this is Mist form to start with. Morph it to Elusive Mist. The other morph does give you a heal, a very small one. And in PvP, that's very, very small. But this will actually make you fast. So, while you're activating this and while it's still persisting, you will take 75% less damage. You will gain Major Expedition, giving you a 30% run speed bonus. And you will be immune to disabling and immobilize effects. But your magic recovery is removed. Now, just bear in mind, of course, if you are already immobilized and you activate this, this will pull you out of it as well. This is your get out of jail free button, and it got drastically altered. Don't worry about the cost right now. That has been reduced, but we'll get to that when we get to the gear. Basically, we can channel this for a very, very long time and get out of a lot of trouble. I'll go over that more in a little while. But for now, you want this particular morph and you want it on your front bar. Next up is Exhilarating Drain. This is the third ability you unlock. Starts off as Vampiric Drain, Morphic 2 Exhilarating Drain. 22 meter range, lasts for 3 seconds, and while siphoning the energy from the enemy, you will actually do damage to them over time. You will heal for 23% of your missing health, so the more health you've got missing, the better. And you generate 4 ultimate every 1 second. So as long as you just beam someone with this, you generate ultimate very, very fast. Make sure you've done a light attack or heavy attack within the last 8 seconds. You'll get 3 ultimate a second alongside of it meaning that your ulti regen is now 7 every second, which is nuts. Now, next up is, of course, Crystal Frags. You have not seen this on one of my builds before, but it is here for a very good reason. So, if you go into Dark Magic, it is, of course, the first ability you unlock. You get this very early on. Starts off as Crystal Shards, morph it to Crystal Fragments. This is very simple. If you activate this, it takes one second to cast, and then you do a magic damage ability. Don't do that. This has a secondary effect. When you cast any other magic ability, you can, of course, turn that ability into a purple version of itself. Instead of it being blue like it is now, it goes all purple and shiny. That will actually have a 35% chance to do so. When you do this, 
your next cast of it is not only instant, but also deals 33% more damage and costs 50% less. So this does look on paper like it can be quite expensive, and it is, but we don't actively spam this in its current state. We use this whenever it glows purple, it costs us half the cost, and it hits harder. This is going to be used alongside a lot of our other skills, and I will show you this towards the end of the gear section as to why this is so important now for us. Next up is Arterial Burst. This is in the Vampire skill line as well, of course. This is our main spammable if you are close range. This will deal magic damage. It deals up to 50% more damage based on your missing health. So if you are in trouble, you can hit harder. And if you use this ability while you're under 50% health, it will guarantee critical strike. So it's actually quite a healthy spammable. If you do have a situation where you're in trouble, you get more aggressive. But this is only 5 meter range, so you have to be very, very close when using it. Now, it starts off as Eviscerate. You want it to be Arterial Burst because the other morph of it actually costs health. Now, while that might help your magic sustain, it doesn't proc your Crystal Shards or your Crystal Frags. So you spam this, and then you can get the free ones of these and hit really, really hard. However, if you can't get that close, or you're not comfortable getting that close, you can swap this for Crush and Shock. It does look like it costs 2.2k there, but it doesn't. Once it's on your bar, based on the setup, it'll actually cost you 2.8. So just be very, very careful with that. Long range interrupt, very nice damage, can make this fire. The choice is yours, but Arterial Burst is actually very, very nice, especially if you're playing this in the way that you should be, which is up close if you can help it. Next up is Mage's Wrath. This is in our Storm Calling skill line as the Sorcerer. It's our main execute. You do not have to use this if you don't want to, but if you do activate this on a target, you will actually have four second timers uh, of this skill on them, where if they go below 20% health, it will pop and basically kill them. Um, but you can apply this under 20% health and still get the same effect. So you've got two options here. You either apply it as an execute when they're low, or you put it on early and push them till they're low and it will pop. Now, if you don't want to use that, you can, of course, put on Proximity Detonation. Just make sure you activate it. It lasts eight seconds and gets close to everybody else as you can. You'll explode. Very, very nice indeed. It's in the Assault skill line. Last ability to unlock starts off as Magicka Detonation. Morph it to Proximity Detonation. Just watch your Magicka sustain because this is very expensive. So you've got two options. You can either use what you're using and just kill them. Or you can use the Execute to finish them off. If you just actively fight people and you're just killing them with these abilities alone, then of course you can put Proxy Debt on to fill the gap and do some massive bomb damage to people. And the ultimate, of course, is Swarm and Scion. This is the Vampire Ultimate. It did get changed quite drastically. Be very careful when activating this because you will drop your block. But you want to go into Blood Scion, morph it to Swarming Scion. This particular one, when transformed, will give you 10k max magic, 10k max stamina, 10k max health. You will heal for 15% of all damage dealt by you from all of your skills and you'll also make a bat swarm surround you doing 3k magic damage every second to every target that gets caught and you will actually continuously do damage and heal at the same time it's nuts and it lasts 20 seconds now this ultimate is incredibly expensive but due to the way that we're set up we've got it down to 148 which is incredibly cheap especially since we use this to drain ultimate off of people's faces which is awesome very very helpful indeed as soon as you've got it pop it and just weigh into people it's very very strong and all of these abilities can be used inside that mutation or that morph or transform transformation, whatever you want to call it. Very strong indeed. So what you want to do essentially is put pressure on people, stun them, drain them, do damage to them, build up your ultimate. Whilst the ultimate is on, go nuts. Now, on the back bar, we are of course using a resto staff. So we are going to use some of these resto staff abilities. Well, one in particular. We are using... The Healing Ward, which is the fourth ability you unlock in this skill line, starts off as Steadfast Ward, morph it to Healing Ward. This is your oh shit button. This is basically if you're in trouble and you need that extra heal or if you want to put a heal on somebody else. This will give you a damage shield and while damage is being absorbed or while the shield is active, you will heal. While the shield persists, the target is healed or you, the target, for 39% of the shield's remaining strength every second. So the longer this shield stays with you at its full potential or even just some, the higher the heals will be. So this is a very strong uh, damage shield stroke heal at the same time. Obviously, it's lesser effective in PvP than you can see on the actual stats here, but it's still very, very nice. And stacks of our next skill, which is Hardened Ward. This is in the Daedric Summoning skill line. Fourth ability you unlock, starts off as Conjured Ward, morph it to Hardened Ward. The higher your health, obviously, the stronger this is going to be, and the higher the Magicka, the stronger this is going to be. It scales in strength off of max Magicka, and it's capped in strength at max health. So the more health you have, the stronger the shield, if your Magicka bar boosts it to that level. 
Now, this is also going to be expensive for us, so don't spam it. But you can, of course, put on Harden Ward and Healing Ward at the same time. Have a double shield and a heal and be safe or safe-ish. Next up is Boundless Storms. This is in the Lightning, uh, Storm Calling skill line, rather. Second ability unlock starts off as Lightning Form, morph it to Boundless Storm. This will give you a resistance buff in the form of Major Resolve, giving you a physical and spell resistance of 5280. It makes you very fast, giving you um, Major Expedition for 4 seconds. But for the whole duration, for 23 seconds, a resistance buff will stay with us, and you'll do Lightning Damage in area of effect. Close range, by the way, every 1 second. That is actually very, very helpful. It's a decent amount of damage, especially if you're in a cluster and really close to people, especially if you've got this ultimate running with the bats spinning around you, and if you've got proxy deck running as well. You've got a lot of AoE. It's actually quite helpful. Um, so keep this up 100% of the time if you can. Just be careful not to spam it too much. If, even if you're trying to get that speed buff, there are other ways to do it, and that will become more apparent once we get into the gear. Next is, of course, Critical Surge. This will give you an increase to your spell and weapon damage. So Major Brutality and Major Sorcery for 33 seconds and all crit damage that you do will heal you once a second so although we are not strictly built for crit we will crit and if we do we'll heal and if we are using this we'll heal again and if we're using this we'll heal again we can actually heal from doing damage while spamming our damage and building ultimate and all that good stuff all at the same time so keep up crit surge it starts off as surge more for to critical surge fourth ability down in the storm calling skill line you want to keep up boundless and crit surge at all costs above everything else next up of course is hypnosis this is in the vampire skill line as well this is very annoying we did not have this in the previous update of, of the build which was quite a while ago because this is a very new design a new skill in fact for the vampire this starts off as Mesmerize, morph it to Hypnosis, and this will stun enemies that are facing you for five seconds, which is disgusting, and it cannot be blocked. They have to be facing you. You've got a seven meter radius. It's absolutely nuts, but that's around you. So all the enemies that are looking at you, surrounding you, within the circle, will be stunned. This can be the game breaker between living and dying for you or them because it's so easy to apply. We are using an ultimate on the back bar, but due to our vampire passives, with the four, um, the fourth stage negative effect to cost, obviously all base abilities go up. So any major ultimates, Meteor, Warhorn, Barrier, whatever, they're all really, really expensive. So we've got an oh shit ultimate instead. We've got a very cheap ultimate that has been massively enhanced cost-wise, but it's still relatively low for us because of our gear choices. So this is only 113 ultimate. It lasts for five seconds. It's in the resto staff skill line, I might add. Starts off as uh, Panacea and morph it to Life Giver. This will give you um, rapid regen or regeneration, in fact. It will give you Blessing of Protection. It will give you the Steadfast Ward for no cost whatsoever. It'll give you three abilities all at the same time, and it will help you basically stay alive. So if you get in trouble, you can, of course, use this. So you've got your damage shield, you've got your heal, you've got your heal every second if you do a crit, you've got your resistance buff and speed buff and damage, you've got your stuns, you've got your massive, uh-oh, I'm in trouble heal, you've got your major ultimate, which turns you into god mode, and you do damage and heal off of everything, execute, spammable, cheaper, really nasty hit and skill, drain for ultimate and heals, and you've got misform for protection. You've got absolutely everything. Now we're going to go into passives, because these are very important. You're going to make sure you get these because otherwise you are in trouble. So, this reduces the health, magicka, and stamina cost of all abilities. Our base abilities have gone up, remember. This gets them down because it's a basic passive, plus vampire abilities, although they're cheaper for us because we're stage 4, this gets them down even more. When you hit an enemy with a di directly applied dark magic ability, you heal. This actually does count, so your crystal frags will heal you. And of course, this can happen every 0.5 seconds. So even if you're light attack spam, light attack spam, because maybe you've got procs happening for God knows what reason, you've got a very short cooldown in which you can get the heal from this. So basically, every time you fire it, you're going to get a heal. Uh, after blocking an attack, your next health, magic, or stamina ability cost is cheaper. So if you do block damage, you will have to play very carefully which skill you use next, because you'll get a reduction to cost. And when you cast a dark magic ability, you get minor prophecy. This will give you and your group a spell crit bonus, which means, of course you have a heightened chance to crit, which means this will heal you more often. So do get that. Daedric Summoning, some of these are important, some aren't. When you have a Daedric Summoning ability or summon killed, so a pet, you get magic back. You won't need that. We don't have pets. And this. This increases your max health with a Daedric pet active. Don't need that either. 
This reduces your ultimate cost by 15%. So the vampire ability being stage 4 has been reduced. And this further reduces it as well. That's awesome. And this increases your health stam recovery by 20% while you have a Daedric Summoning ability slotted. Now, we only have one. And that's our damage shield on the back bar. So on the back bar, we get the recovery. On the front, we don't. So that's actually quite important to note that on the back bar, you get this extra bonus. So if you are trying to block and stay out of trouble, you might want to be on your back bar to do so. Because then you can benefit from that. While blocking, by the way, you don't get the stam recovery. But if you've just done a load of blocking and break free and all the rest of it, you might want to swap to your back bar to get that little bonus for the time being. This increases your mag recovery. That helps. This increases your physical and shock damage. We are doing shock damage from our execute, and we will be doing that from our staff as well. I'll get to that when we get to the gear, but this passive is actually quite helpful. This increases your damage done against enemies by 1% for every 10% current health they have. So the higher their health, the higher the percentage of extra damage you do. If they're 100%, you get 10% extra damage. If they're 90, you get 9% extra damage, and so on and so forth, all the way down to 10%, which is just 1% extra damage. This means that at base, we still have the same amount of damage as you would have for a character, but this bonus is always going to be something more than what you would have had without the passive you are even at low health you are going to get a one percent overall but it's like a burst passive so the higher their health the more damage you do and then the lower the health you still do more damage than base but it's less effective and then that's when you throw in your execute to close the gap uh we still miss a couple passives here this one here increases your weapon and spell damage for each sorcerer ability slotted front bar we have two back bar we have three 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 bonuses of spell damage on the back two on the front that is entirely up to you. However, you can use other stuff if you want. Like I said, if you have proxy debt on here, you won't get the spell damage bonus, but you will have the AoE burst, which is quite handy. We are, of course, using the destruction staff. Try focus is very important. We're using a shock staff. Your heavy attacks will do splash damage to nearby enemies. 100% of the damage, in fact. That's actually very, very important because lightning heavy attacks are much, much easier to channel in order to get your sustain back or your recovery back or resources back, whatever you want to call it. And at the same time, for doing so, you can hit multiple targets, which is really, really helpful. And there is a reason for the lightning stuff as well. Um, you have, obviously, penetration bonuses for using destruction staff abilities, which is your lights and heavies. You will increase your chance of applying burn and concussion and chilled status effects, which is handy. Your lightning staff abilities... Not just those, but any abilities while holding a lightning staff, if their area of effect will be stronger by 8%. Now, yes, crystal frags is direct, so flame would increase that. This is direct, so flame would increase that, and so is this. But the splash from this is area of effect, and we really want these bats to hit very, very hard alongside proxy debt if we are using it. So proxy debt and bats combined, massive, massive AoE bonus from this passive. So for the purpose of the major bonuses to the builds so gone into god mode running in hitting everyone because we do want to hit everyone this is where it will really start kicking off the flame stuff it's very very awkward because people can um protect against direct damage they can reflect direct damage channeling a heavy attack you, the only thing they can dodge roll is the last pop the rest of it they're screwed so the lightning staff will benefit you not just for recovery not just for ease of use but also for when you have area of effect abilities running especially your ultimate when you kill an enemy with a destruction staff ability, you restore 3600 magicka. So if you heavy attack and pop and kill somebody, get extra magic back. Handy, handy. The rest of the staff, of course, is very important. You do have to get these passes, pay attention to them. You will gain major expedition for three seconds after completing a heavy attack. So if you do a heavy attack, you will get 25% increase to your healing done. So that's when you want to pop your damage shield, or even if you've got it already active, heavy attack in between, or drain after, or whatever. Take advantage of that bonus. You also heal yourself or an ally um for 31 percent of the damage inflicted by the final hit of the fully charged heavy attack so if you do finish a heavy you will get heal from it at the end and major mending will be affecting that as well this increases your healing by 15 percent on allies under 30 percent health so if your health's really low you get a bigger heal from your shield or if you put on somebody else your fully charged heavy attacks restore more magic so yes of course if you're on the back bar you will get more magic back quicker utilize that to your advantage this restores magic when you block a spell if you're on that bar and this increases your healing with resto staff spells by 5%. So if you are on this bar with the resto equipped, you will take advantage of increased healing from this. So this is your safety bar. There's your stuns, your buffs, and your heals and shields. Light armor, of course. We are using five pieces of light armor. So we'll take all of these passives. This one especially is for the five pieces. It gives you a massive pen bonus. So you go through their resistances and hit them really hard. This increases your spell crit rating. This increases your resistance per piece. This will increase your mag recovery and reduces your abilities costs, which is for all abilities, not just your basic ones, your vampire ones too. And this reduces the cost of sprint, which we will be doing, and reduces the effectiveness of snares applied to you, 
which is awesome unless we use misform in which case we're out anyway depending on what it is we are using one piece of medium you want a couple of these this is a weapon crit bonus you don't need that Windwalker, you do want because it increases your stam recovery for per piece worn and reduces the cost of your stam abilities. We're not using stam abilities, but we do want to make sure we have that recovery because we are going to need to break free, dodge, and block, and all that good stuff. So we want to make sure that we do get it back quite effectively. And you will want to make sure you get athletics. This increases your movement speed while sprinting and reduces the cost of dodge roll. So that's going to be helpful. An improved sneak. This reduces the cost of sneak for 7% per piece. We are going to be sneaking occasionally. And this reduces your detection as well. So we're very hard to find. We're very sneaky. We've got one bonus from the medium armor that we are going to use. So this is really helpful and does play alongside the role of the vampire as well. Heavy armor, you only need the top three. This will give you increased health. This will give you mag and stam return when you take damage once every four seconds. And this will also increase your resistances. So three here. You want light armor, obviously, all of them. Medium armor, you want Windwalker, improved sneak, and athletics. Then we want to go into the vampire passives, which are very important. You need this because you ignore your sneak movement penalty. Basically, when you sneak, you slow down. No, we don't. We get rid of it. We have no penalty. We're really fast. When you leave sneak or invisibility or mist form, your weapon and spell damage is increased by 300 for 6 seconds. So if you, if you stealth, if you go invisible, if you put on mist form and you even need it just for a second... You will get a massive spell damage bonus. Very helpful indeed. Utilize that as much as possible, but you must be stage four, uh, 2 or higher. This is for biting people. You don't need that. Reduces your damage taken by up to 30% based on your miss and health. So the lower your health, the less damage you take. Have to be stage 3 or higher. And this one is nuts. Reduces the cost of sprinting by 50%. And if you continuously sprint for 3 seconds, you automatically become invisible. I believe on live that is actually longer. I believe that's six seconds, but it's still nuts nonetheless. You sprint, it costs you bugger all, and you vanish. And what happens when you vanish? You are invisible, so you get 300 extra spell damage when you come out of it. Very, very nice indeed. Now, we are, of course, not using any Fighter's Guild abilities, but you will want this. Banish the Wicked is great. If you kill anyone that's undead, Daedra, or Werewolf, so that can be NPCs or players, you'll get 9 ultimate back when they die. Now, Undaunted, of course, you are going to need these. If you take a Synergy, and you should do, I've been in a lot of groups recently in PvP where people are actually trying to take advantage of Synergies, finally, you will get resources back, so do that. And we're using 5-1-1, so 2 heavy, uh, sorry, 1 heavy, 1 medium, and 5 light. 3 different types of armor, 3 different bonuses, 6% flat stats across the board. Very, very helpful indeed. Now, we are, of course, a PvP build, so we are going to want these passives. This will increase your weapon and spell damage by 10% and magic and stamina recovery by 20% for 10 minutes when you capture a mill, farm, mine, or keep. So if you're in Cyrodiil, that's a really helpful bonus. Increases the range of long-range abilities by 5 meters while near a keep or outpost, as long as the ability is 28 meters or further. So this won't reach, but Crushing Shock will. So just bear that in mind. You can actually spam interrupts from long range if you want to. When you kill an enemy... You generate 20 ultimate. Bear in mind, of course, we can drain ulti really fast. we also got our basic stuff for 3 a second. We've also got our really cheap ultimate as well, 148 instead of a stupid amount, like 300 or so. And we get 20 per kill. We will be getting kills, especially if you're using Mage's Wrath, because you can kind of ninja kills by putting the execute on before they die and then just taking it. You will be able to stay active in Vampire form a lot. This skill line here... This increases your mag recovery for each support ability slotted. We don't actually have any, so that's not going to benefit us. But you will get bonuses from this. Increases your healing done by 20% when you're near a keep. I don't need to be one to tell you that that's obviously helpful. And reduces the time it takes for you to resurrect another player by 30% while you are in a PvP area. Your reses are faster. Really helpful. We are, of course, a high elf. This, when you activate a class ability, you restore 640 magicka or stamina based on whichever is lowest. Our stamina is lowest. Using a class ability gives us juice back. We can block, dodge roll, sprint, all that good stuff. And just using one of our abilities, even if it's a damage shield, will give us stamina. Once every six seconds, by the way. And when you're using a channeled ability, you take 5% less damage. Misform's channeled. Drain is channeled. That's a bit nuts. And your heavy attacks are channeled. So that can be very, very helpful. You have 2k max magic and 258 spell damage. 
on top as well. You can choose any race you like, but this actually worked out very, very nice. Lots of people like to go Breton to get the cost down. Of course, that will help, but you won't have the uh, the return to resources if you use a class ability, nor the reduction to damage from channeled abilities, although you will get a good resistance bonus. The choice is yours race-wise, but that actually worked out really, really well. Alchemy is very important. You do want to get medicinal use as soon as possible because your potions will last 30% longer. We are using immovable pots. The recovery bonuses on them for our Magicka and health is actually going to be with us. The health recovery is no good, but the Magicka recovery is. We are going to keep that. We are going to be able to take advantage of it when we want to, but the immovable doesn't obviously last 45 or 47 seconds, whereas the rest does. But it does still increase it. So we've got very good uptime on our immovable pots. Now, we're going to get into the gear, and this is going to start making a lot more sense, because this is where it all starts balancing out. We are using potentates on the front and back bar. Two-hander weapon on each one. One is a lightning staff, one is a resto. Resto is obviously for the resto skills, because you've seen those already. And you want that empowered, so you can heal more on your back bar. With a magic drain poison. On the front bar, you want increased weapon and spell damage, and you want it sharpened to go for as much penetration as possible, or as much resistance as possible. The set itself is a three-piece bonus. It gives you reduction to damage taken by players for 5%, which is huge, and reduce the cost of your ultimate abilities by 15%. So our basic ultimate that we're using to survive and our vampire one. We've got a lot of reduction to cost. We use one piece of jewelry and two weapons, front and back. That's your three-piece covered. Now, the monster set we're using is Mother Ciantes, and this is actually stupid. 1k max magicka, and while in combat, no, you have to be in combat, if you cast an ability with a channel time, you gain a damage shield. And if the damage shield runs out, you get magic back. And you can do this once every six seconds. Now, what did we learn earlier? This is a channeled ability if you hard cast it. But we're not going to be doing that. We want it to go purple. We'll use the insta cast. However, if you accidentally do it, it'll pop. This is a channeled ability. So you drain an enemy. You're trying to get health back off them. You're trying to get ultimate really, really quickly. Of course, the damage shield is on. Great. What else works? Mistform. Mistform is a channeled ability now. Every one second it drains your magic. You can actually activate a damage shield from that monster set in Mistform while running away. And it makes you even harder to kill. Not only is it a channeled ability and really, really, really cheap. You get a damage shield from your set. And because we're a high elf, we also have that important passive that gives us the reduction to damage taken. 75% reduction to damage for being in mist form very very fast less damage taken from this passive and it gives us the shield very very nice combination overall and you can be in mist form for a stupid long time also by the way one heavy one medium so we want reinforced on the heavy doesn't matter which order it's in but you want reinforced on the heavy and you want well fitted on the um medium so then you've got the dodge roll bonus and the sprint cost reduction bonus we are going to sprint a lot we'll see that in a minute the main set we're using is still, even after three years, the Vampire Lord set. Not only because it's a basic set that was on the build originally, but because now it's been buffed to hell. Impen on every single piece of this. Max magic, spell damage, and spell crit, which is quite handy. But this affects our stats as a vampire. We're stage four on purpose. Being stage four, we take extra 6% flame damage while we're in this set, on top of what we already have. We have an extra 6% increase to cost of our basic abilities that aren't vampire abilities for wearing this set. And we have a 20% reduction to all vampire ability costs on top of stage 4 vampire. This is nuts and this is why our ultimate is so cheap and this is why our abilities are so cheap because stage 4 and that set combined make it so that this stuff is stupidly low. Now although these basic abilities will be a bit higher, we've actually covered that with our traits or bonuses or glyphs or whatever so we're gone full vampire lord set there is six pieces of course because we're using two on the front one on the jewelry two on the monster set five on the body and then we've got a spare piece the reason we've got a spare piece i'm going to explain in a moment so the spare piece can just be a crafted whatever you like five of these two of these three of these one crafted piece of whatever you want and we are using this we are using Ring of the Wild Hunt. Now, this does come in swift, so it gives you a speed bonus, but you don't have to have it there if you don't want to. You can have any trait you like. But we've gone one infused, one healthy, and one swift. And infused has a different glyph on it. This is a new one. This will reduce the cost of health, magicka, and stamina abilities by 213. That helps towards basically everything. It's the only way, of course, to get the health cost down of things as well. 
which is quite helpful. You can, of course, use a Magicka Reduction to Cost Glyph if you prefer, and it will get it down even further. But, of course, we do want to get some of the stamina stuff down. It does actually help towards your dodge and sprint as well. So, Infuse, one of these is really nice. But, again, if you don't have access to those, or you're not using anything that actually really affects you that way, you can, of course, go with a Magicka one instead. Now, this has spell damage on it, of course, because we need that. But this increases your movement speed by 15% while in combat and increases your movement speed by 45% while out of combat. And this stacks with other bonuses of speed increase. There is a cap, yes, but this is absolutely insane. It's very, very fast. Now, not only that, when you sprint, you're faster. And if you sprint for longer, you will go invisible as a vampire. You can literally do this. Run. Run. And stay sprinting while invisible. Bye bye. And my sprint costs are so low because of the stages of vampirism and their bonuses. So I can sprint for a very long time as a Magicka build. And even if I'm not sprinting, I can still mist form, get major expedition, and still run really, really fast. And check this out. If I sprint, this is the speed of me sprinting. And then I misform and keep running. I didn't slow down. Misform has major expedition put inside of it. My sprint and the ring combined. And my misform with the ring combined are the same. If I go to misform, I'm basically sprinting across the field. And look at my magic bar. It's not going anywhere. I can do this for a really, 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 really long time. And also in combat. Let's have a damage shield. They'll never catch you. And even if they do, they won't hurt you. It's absolutely insane. We should probably kill him. I oh, know he's going to reset anyway. Go away. So, that's a very, very nice item. You will have to go into the antiquity system to get this, but it's really, really fun. Now, jewelry wise, you want one potentate, um, one ring of the wild hunt, and then you can go with one crafted. So like I said here, when we've got too many of the same thing, you can go for a crafted one. But the crafted one, you want to go infused and you want to go with a reduction to magic cost or a reduction to magic health and stam cost. The choice is yours. The reduction to magic cost is going to be absolutely mental with an infused, by the way. Um, but you can, of course, get the cost down for your, your sprint and block and dodge, uh, your sprint and dodge because they do get affected. So again, the choice is yours. I'll put healthy on here for the time being to make sure my health is high enough. But of course... You can get bonuses from your group. You can change your food and all that good stuff as well. It's up to you. But to go over it briefly again, Lightning on the front, Resto on the back. That's Potentates. Then you've got one Potentates Jewelry, one Ring of the World Hunt, one Crafted, or you can just go two Potentates if you really want. doesn't make a difference. And then five Vampire Lord with two Mother Sianti on top. It's absolutely mental. You do have to pay a lot of attention to what you're doing. You do have to understand the build fully in order to take advantage of all its little quirks and perks. But it's very, very nice indeed. Stun people, pin them down, keep your buffs up, drain them, turn into Vampire Lord, kill everybody in the face. Now, we're going to go over champion points quickly before we go. And then hopefully you can get started and have some fun with it. So 61 points into Ironclad to reduce the amount of direct damage you take. 40 points into Resistant to increase your critical resistance. We have a very good crit resistance at base. We've got some in our gear as well. It actually helps quite a lot to have that extra 40 points in there. Although we're quite tanky anyway. This reduces the amount of damage you take from um, physical and magic damage and then damage over time. Next is, of course, 19 points into Quick Recovery to increase the amount of heal and receive we have. And Expert Defender reduces the amount of damage we take from light and heavy attacks. We're got really good damage mitigation anyway especially if we're running around in misform for god knows how long but this will further reduce the amount of light and heavies you take you will get hit with them quite a bit this will reduce the cost of sprinting furthermore because we've got a reduction to cost of sprinting which is insane and we can run very very fast this reduces the cost of break free this increases the amount of magic you get back from your heavy attacks whether it be resto or um destro and this increases your mag recovery as well. Just bear in mind, no mag recovery inside Misform. This reduces the cost of dodge roll, which we're going to need. This reduces the cost of block, which we're also going to need. And this reduces the cost of sneak. We're going to be sneaking. We're going to be sprinting. We're going to be invisible. We're going to be Misform. We're going to use all that stuff. And remember, every time you come out of one of those phases, you will have increased spell damage. 23 points into Elfborn just to give us a bit of a healing crit bonus. Not too worried about the damage as such because most people pack in pen anyway. But we will take it for the healing. This increases your healing done. This increases the amount of damage you do overall because all of our damage is going to be contributing from this particular 
uh, bonus. And spell erosion, we've gone with 42 points into here to give us 3.5k pen on top of the sharpened weapon, which is almost 2.7. On top of the light armor passes, which is 4884. We've got a lot of uh, penetration and we've got the Munda Stone as well, which is absolutely nuts. We are going to strip resists. This is to increase your direct damage, which we are doing quite a bit of. This will increase your damage against damage shields, which we will hit because there's a lot of Sorks out there stacking shields. And of course, this will increase your light and heavy attacks from your re um, Resto and your Destro stuff. Of course, we've got 75 in Thermitage. We are doing some damage over time, especially in our Vampire form. And this will give you the Exploiter passive because when things do go off balance, and they will, because there's lots of people hitting stuff with off balance skills and sets and all that good stuff, you will do 10% more damage. And that's really helpful when it comes to our Execute as well because you can kill people rapidly. So hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too boring, hopefully you now better understand how to approach this new updated build, and of course hopefully you have a lot of fun with it. It's going to take a little bit of practice to understand how everything works, and it's all linked together, but it's really shiny and really, really fun. And it's so annoying being stunned all the time by a vampire, whereas before it had to be a class ability to do so. So, first of all, thank you very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. If you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and the website zynogaming.com. Don't forget, of course, I do live stream every night except Wednesdays on Twitch from 10 p.m. UK time. So hopefully I'll see some of you there as well. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.